Uh, it is eight o'clock in the morning on a cold January Monday here in London. And while everyone around me is off to work, I'm heading off for four days of intensive language training using one of the most famous language learning methods in the world to learn one of the hardest languages in the world. It's gonna be interesting. My name is Ollie Richards, founder of the I Will Teach You A Language website. And over the past few years, you've seen me take on language challenges around the world, such as Thai, Spanish, and Italian. But this is one of the most interesting yet. The language is Korean, which the Foreign Service Institute ranks as a category four language, a super hard language, languages which are exceptionally difficult for native English speakers. So no challenge there then. The method I'll be using is the world famous Michel Thomas method, made famous by the man himself, a Polish war veteran turned language guru who used his unique method to teach languages to stars like Mel Gibson, Woody Allen, and Bob Dylan. The latest course in this series is Korean, and I'm going to be one of the students in the live recording, along with... I'm Keris. Um, I'm one of the students on this Korean course. I'm really, really excited to be learning Korean and especially excited to see how much Korean we can learn in just four days. So really looking forward to getting started. Who's going to win, me or you? It's not competition. <laughs> We're all learning together. <laughs> That's right. Four days of recording to learn Korean. It's short and it's intense. And in this documentary, I'm going to take you into the studio with me and tell you the story of the whole recording process. So you can see how a Michelle Thomas course is actually made from the perspective of everyone involved, including the producers, the editors and the engineers. And let's not forget about the teachers. Hello, I'm Derek Driggs. I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford. I'm studying linguistics and I'm one of the teachers on the complete Michelle Thomas Korean course. 안녕하세요. I'm one of the teachers. Uh, we made designed this course together, Derek and myself. And this is really amazing method. Um, basically, you don't have to uh, remember, try to memorize things, but you actually enjoy and by enjoying, and actually you end up running the language. And I really hope you all enjoy this course. Welcome to the Michelle Thomas um, Start and Foundation Korean course. We're really excited to have you with us to learn Korean in this unique um, and exciting method. We'll start by just introducing to you what the Michelle Thomas method of learning is all about. Um, this is very different from most methods of language learning and from probably what you're familiar with. Michelle Thomas was a language educator who believed that language learning should be something like riding a train. So when you take a train somewhere, um, you don't feel a sense of responsibility to get from where you're starting to where you're going. You sort of just sit back and and wait and let the, the conductor or the driver of the train do his or her job. And Michelle Thomas believed that language learning should be the same thing. The responsibility and the pressure should fall on the teacher and the students should be able to sort of sit back and relax and allow the, the teacher to bring them from where they start to where they want to end. And so our goal today and throughout this course is to allow you to sort of have that experience of riding on this train from your start of not knowing any Korean to hopefully um, gaining some comfort in using some conversational Korean. The approach of the Michel Thomas course is conversation from the start. You won't be learning any grammar rules or doing any abstract exercises. You'll be speaking in complete phrases right from the beginning. And I think that works really well in the way most grammar sort of um, approaches in a way this is the point and you, you teach the points and then your people have to memorize this point and have to exercise but actually what we try to do is naturally you're exposed to a grammatical principle but then you try out a small bits and then you naturally learn without actually learning what you're there learning okay so so another very important action word in korean is the word for to eat um, eating food is a very important part of of korean culture and we'll talk about some of those kinds of foods in, in a minute. But the word for to eat, this one can be a little bit tricky to wrap your mouth around. It's mogoyo. 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 So one more time. Mogoyo. 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 Good. And I there, there's a few ways that, that you can associate different words with this. One that I like to think of is a mug for that first syllable because a mug is associated with eating and drinking. Mogoyo. Derek and June 
were leading the sessions and they had to respond and react to everything that happened for better or for worse. So you might be interested in how they prepared for the big day. The unique thing about preparing this course was that we started with basic conversational principles. So we totally ignored the basic um, the steps of grammar that we would usually use and we just took complete phrases and, and it, first of all, just put them on, on the paper. Mm -hmm. And then we went phrase by phrase rather than going grammar by grammar step by grammar step. <laughs> How are you feeling? Like that. Like that? <laughs> but very excited about how far we've come. So, what, well, what have we done? We've just finished the first day of recording. Yeah. How was it for you? It was amazing. It was incredibly intense, um, but a really brilliant experience and genuinely very exciting that by the end of a few hours you can be saying quite complex sentences. Well, we can say a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. We must have learned, I guess, at least 50 words today, I think. something and like that, yeah. And we can put long sentences together already. I mean, yes. it's, no, it's, we should be feeling pretty proud cool. Of yeah, no, I, th I think so. <laughs> All right, it's day two. It's Michelle Thomas Korean. Now, the interesting thing about this method is that the, it looks a lot unlike any other method you've probably tried before. So there's uh, you don't take any notes, you don't write anything down. In fact, you're expressly forbidden from writing anything down. You're just sitting there comfortably paying attention to uh, what's going on. And also, then in the evening, when you leave the class, you're not allowed to do any homework can't study. Hi, I'm Rowan. I guess I'm the project manager for the recording and technical side. I started recording the first uh, Michel Thomas courses with Michel himself back in, I think it was 1998. Um, when we were started recording, we didn't quite know what we were doing in those days, but uh, we had a lot of editing to do. I basically oversee the recording and the final editing and delivery of the files. Hi, I'm Helen Gilhooley. I'm the commissioning editor for the Michel Thomas courses. Um, we're really excited this week to be doing the Korean course and we're just at the beginning of the process for the recording. Uh, once it's all completed, I will be taking it away and beginning the editing of it. Now, how would I say, really, today the Wi-Fi is not working well? Well. Wi-Fi. Cha. Andre. 그래요. 오늘 Wi-Fi 잘 안돼요. Now, how might I say, when did you go to Korea? When did you go to Korea? 언제 한국 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 언제 한국 갔어요? 언제 한국 갔어요? Good. What if I want to say? I went to Korea yesterday. And Hangugo is the Korean language. So how would I say I went to Korea yesterday? Good. So the editing of the Michelle Thomas course is a really interesting process. It's a long process because I need to listen to everything. So if we've done several takes or if um, there's been a lot of thinking out and so on, I need to listen to it all, have it all on the screen like this, and then I can cut um, things that aren't necessary or mistakes that people make that aren't going to help the learner. But there's also um, a part of the process, a really important part of the process, is to always be thinking, is this going to be useful for the learner who's going to buy this product? So it's a case of keeping in mistakes that help people, leaving out mistakes that in the end are just going to get irritating for people to listen to. How many hours of material do we have for this? For this one we've got 16 hours, which is about average. That's what we normally get over four days. Um, and I've got to cut that down to 10 hours. One of the things the Michelle Thomas method does really well is to give you a very good overview of the grammar of the language and how to use it to express yourself. I can easily imagine a regular Korean course taking a year or more to teach some of the tenses that we were learning and using by the end of these four days. Of course, we were severely limited in what we could say by the vocabulary that we knew or, or didn't know, but there's a nice sense of confidence that comes from being able to navigate around different tenses and verb forms right at the start. About that, I think in another recording, 
where at some point it might just be good to summarize. And you don't have to get it. You can say, oh, you know how to say this. And then just get them to mm -hmm. quickly review mm -hmm. it. So it's Absolutely. like, right, that's yeah. all fresh. Yeah. You know, let's yeah. start again. Yeah. Yeah. We went through different drafts. We recruited a few students to help us out. And we would go through a few hours of the course with those students and see how they progressed. And we'd go back and make some changes based on what they struggled with and what they were able to do. And one time we went through the entire eight hours of the course and really saw some great success with it. And that was when we knew, okay, we have a good start here. There's undoubtedly a lot of pressure on the students in a situation like this. Both Keris and I were very aware throughout that the mic was on and we had to do a good job. Of course, with the final product, you can take your time and listen back as often as you want. Obviously worth, like, and it's Helen, the editor of the course, is instrumental in producing the final results. She doesn't just edit the audio. She works closely with the teachers and students throughout to ensure that she gets what she needs to create the final product. Um, yes, yeah. so it was well, new, it had been in there before. On average, for every hour I work, I'll create about five minutes of audio. So it works out over, it takes a couple of months, about 150 to 180 hours to create a 10 hour course. So we've, we've got a lot of things that I won't want to cut. You know, getting it down from 16 hours to 10 hours will be quite an interesting challenge for me. But so? Day two. End of day two. Yep. I'm tired, how about you? <laughs> I'm definitely tired. How was today compared to day one? I would say, I don't know how you feel, but relatively similar in terms of moments of feeling like you've got it mm. and then odd moments of stress <laughs> which you're not meant to have in the Michelle Thomas method <laughs> at no all stress. but um, kind of feeling as though you've forgotten things it is yeah there's definitely I kind of go through these highs of just everything remembering everything very clearly mm -hmm. and then and then you know half an hour later totally blanking mm -hmm. on a word from earlier but I guess that's part of the process right you can yeah, struggle exactly. and then in this course, although Derek and June both wrote the course together, their roles for recording are slightly different. Derek is the lead teacher, while June is the native speaker voice that you get to hear along with every example that's given. Here's Derek talking about the teaching process from the perspective of the teacher. So most of it is listening to the students and reacting to them. And then what I'm doing looking at the paper is just making sure that I haven't forgotten to introduce any vocabulary um, and that in the sentences that we're creating, I'm including all of the vocab and the, the grammar that we had planned. In any short course, there are limits to what you can cover. And the Michelle Thomas method focuses heavily on the grammar and structures of the language, which ends up giving you lots of tools to express yourself in different ways, but not a great deal of vocabulary. So is this a problem? So this, this too is just, we sort of made a list of vocabulary that we thought um, would help students in basic conversation. So. By the end of the course, you're, you don't have a huge amount of vocab that you've learned, but you're much more conversational than you would be from just studying from a book. So it's not the same vocab that might be taught in a traditional course, but it's, it's vocab that we felt would help to be in the student becoming conversational. So I think it's not like basic elementary vocabulary that you know, um, satisfies a certain level of Korean, but I think it's more random. But of course, um, you know, we used a lot of English loan words in order to make it more accessible. But so these vocabulary not actually coincide with the basic vocabulary, but the vocabulary that just comes, happens to be there in the, during the, uh, the course and during our... Ochi, Hanguk Sama, Wasoi. Hanguk Saram Chuayo, Greso Oje, Hanguk Drama Pasoyo. It's interesting, uh, we, we both kind of collapsed at different points this afternoon. We did, we? we did. I felt fantastic all day until the last 20 minutes. We had our afternoon break. Um, I really wish we hadn't because I came back from that and honestly felt as though my brain had emptied and was just really disappointed in myself because before that I was finding it quite good, like really, really good. But then I felt like after the afternoon break you came back to life a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I completely tanked after lunch. I, I was just like, Oh, I, can't, mm. I just can't think of anything. So here we are, day four, um, last day. I'm, it's funny, I was expecting to feel really brain dead by, by, by day four, by the fourth day. Four days of like full on uh, intensive uh, learning and recording. And I'm, I'm physically tired, I'm kind of exhausted, but mentally I'm actually feeling really great. Uh, 
it's like I had this. Exp what seems to happen is that this, like, a night's sleep just washes out all the stress and tension, and I wake up the next day feeling like I know more than I did the day before. How would I say? Because I learned Korean today, when I go to Korea, I will meet Insu. 오늘 그거 배워서 한국에 그때 I will meet Insu. Na. <laughs> 오늘 한국어 배워서 한국에 갈때 인수 만날 거예요. Good job. Really good. Amazing. Amazing. Good job. Did you just want to get that old thank you in? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> You've done really well. As, as we're saying, Korean. Good. <laughs> You've done very well. <laughs> Which in Korean, if I wanted to say you did well, you know how to say that. 잘했어요. 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 And thank you in Korean is 감사합니다. 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 It's been amazing. Ollie and Karis have both been incredibly patient and excited to learn, and they put up with sentence after sentence of sort of the same monotonous stuff, and we've been incredibly impressed with how much they're able to say. I mean, really, at this point, there is so much that both of you know how to say. It's amazing. I think it's really incredible, like, as I said, like, this level of sentence structure in order to teach, like, a class, it takes at least in two terms. But then you've done it how many hours and you're now able to say all this different kind of so I'm really impressed and yeah. And also, you know, I we really kind of learn study Korean language regulative as you can do it. But actually I've seen how it works. So I think it's really interesting for me too. We finished. We have finished. I'm really, really sad. I'm really sad it's over. It has genuinely been one of the best things I've ever done. Really? I really, really awesome. wish. I could do it all again next week and the week after. <laughs> it was just amazing. Four days. When, you, when you're working this intensely, four days just pass so quickly. Oh, it and really, really did. This week's gone by in an absolute flash. Yeah. So we can speak Korean. I mean, we're not at the point where we can That's have a bold. Where we can have a... <laughs> we couldn't sit and have a, a, any kind of meaningful conversation, but we could say a lot of kind of functional things. Yes. And I guess the, the big thing that, that I, I guess I feel... I would need to develop now in order to really be able to use the language is just some more vocabulary. Yeah, absolutely. We just don't know enough words. Yeah, and practice. Over and, and over what we've done. Practice. Over yeah. and over again. But as, as June was saying, um, you know, the, the grammatical stuff we've covered in these four days would take mm. two semesters at university to cover. Mm -hmm. So we've really yeah. come, come a long way. No wonder it's been intense. <laughs> yes. Now yeah. the question is, uh, you know, are we, what are we going to do to keep up? Because we've just spent, you know, so much time learning. Days, what are your plans absolutely. for well, keeping up Korean? No way I'm not keeping this up. They've, they've been an amazing four days and I love the language. It's my first Asian language. Um, I've forgotten how exciting it is to learn a brand new language. So I will be doing anything. I'm going to be listening to K-pop every day. K-pop. I'm going to be watching K-dramas. I need to learn the alphabet. So I've got my alphabet book. Um, I'll get some alphabet apps as well. And... I guess, like, also, I'd quite like to sort of sit there and traditionally learn some vocab in the old-fashioned way. And also, yeah. I was looking on Instagram. Old-fashioned way, you mean textbooks? Yes, yeah. <laughs> also, old-fashioned. I... Would you consider taking a class or enrolling in a Korean course oh, or yeah, something? I need to have a look. I haven't yeah. looked at what there is, but I'd like to do a degree in Korean, but I've got to go to work, so... <laughs> a degree in Korean? We've got a keen one here. She's, uh... <laughs> I mean, I've, really, I've really enjoyed it, too. I, I would hate to not... I'll keep it up. Yeah. And there are rumours of an intermediate course. I hope so. <laughs> which I promise intermediate. And if we do that, well, we have to, uh, can't be completely fresh, can we? We have to, yeah, exactly. have to know we our can't stuff. Be too good. <laughs> anyway, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been amazing. Lots of fun. I hope mm. you've enjoyed watching this. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and like this video if you have. There's a lot more where this came from. And I guess we'll be seeing you back for part two at some point. 
If you'd like to order Michelle Thomas Korean calls, and he's in all the shops on Amazon, anywhere else you might like to buy it, so just search for that. We'll put a link down below as well for you to, uh, to check that out if you'd like to hear me and Keris hear it all. <laughs> making a dog's dinner of the language, and you can. Uh, but also exhaling. Also exhaling. <laughs>